from Miami Beach, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Acronis Global Cyber Summit 2019. Brought to you by Acronis. Hello everyone, welcome back to this CUBE coverage here in Miami Beach at the Fontainebleau Hotel for Cronus' Global Cyber Summit 2019. I'm John Furrier. Two days of coverage, we're on day two, learning a lot about the global security, cyber security and protection marketplace and solutions. Our next guest is Alex Miroshenko, also known as Alex Miro. Great to have you on. Uh, great chatting with you prior to coming on camera. Thanks my, uh, for my coming pleasure. on. My pleasure, thank you. So, Vice President of Cyber Infrastructure for Acronis, essentially looking at your platform, that's essentially the hyper-converged stack underneath the platform <laughs> software you're enabling, kind of the critical infrastructure for that, the Yeah, that's the one, platform. Way to, one way to describe it. it. It is infrastructure, we provide the complete stack all the way, whatever you run on top of uh, the standard commodity hardware, including the virtualization layer, uh, the capability to run the st standard container workload, and essentially optimized for you know the our our cyber platform. You know your interesting uh, background. We were talking before we came on camera about your your background. Certainly, you've seen waves of innovation. You've been a high performance storage enterprise infrastructure um, you know, engineer and developer and uh, executive. Lots changed in the past couple years, and certainly the past decade. You were on the vSAN wave. You saw that storage wave. Now we're in a cloud wave. Now we're on premise with hybrid. All right. So hybrid's certainly now a big part of the operating model. Right. So the operating system is not just storage anymore, it's a, it's a system view. What's your um, personal opinion on where storage is now? I've heard software-defined data center from VMware for years. Uh, we even joked about software-defined storage, software-defined compute. Everything. I mean, everything's software-defined, but, but software is the game. Scale's a game. High performance is a requirement. What's changed in storage right now? Well, and like everything and nothing at the same time. And as I said, like remember going back to like 30 years ago, it was like, oh gosh, you know, like the storage is exploding, you know, soon we're going to have like two gigabytes. <laughs> 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 you know, a company server, my God, you know. <laughs> and uh, it's like, oh, or, you know, where's it going to come from? Or like imagine when people start recording music or, you know, like, <laughs> like they've seen this MP3 thing coming yeah. up, so. Uh, it's the same game, different year. <laughs> but more more data, like, more storage. It's, it's, it's like this exponential curve. It's like the shape of the curve stays the same. And to be honest, like I, like part of me like never believes that. I was like, oh come on, how much bigger can it get? And now everybody's like, oh, we got IoT line. We got like those cameras, streaming things 24/7 in every possible thing you can think of. And of course, we're gonna store everything. Well, we don't necessarily know what to do with it, but. Um, so from that point of view, the demand keeps growing and uh, you need to have technologies to handle that appropriately. Yeah. And again, it's just not a matter of uh, kind of throwing the bits somewhere and forgetting about them. It's just keeping them in a predefined order and actually being able to process them. And Acronis is in the business of uh, cyber protection. And some people say, oh, you, you guys just like a backup company. Yeah, that's the yeah. fundamental part of that. But as you pointed out again in our pre-game chat, as you call it, <laughs> is uh, the traditional data protection guys, be that backup, you know, you can think about as the various, like a RAID as a way to protect uh, your data. They are all about defending against like a physical disruption as you call it, right? Okay, my disk died, you know, it's like my data center died, you know, like my power went out, so, yeah. so what do I do? I was the data. But it does not protect what I call a logical disruption. I mean, back in the, like, the classic logical example. Logical disruption, what is disruption. that? Disruption. Okay, yeah, logical disruption. Did you disruption. say disruption? Okay. <laughs> disruption, disruption, disruption. No, same thing. I mean, right. some, <laughs> ransomware is pretty much destructive. I mean, it's hostage at that point, but but I mean, you logical re meaning non-physical, not like an event like a hurricane or outage or something well, like that. I mean, that. you removed the wrong file, well, the right file, and uh, you didn't notice that. And then you went through several backup cycles, and then you realize, oh, I want my file back. But then you like the backup that had that file is gone. I mean, you know, what are you gonna do, right? Nothing got disrupted, <laughs> disrupted, <laughs> destroyed, but. 
<laughs> Your file's gone, that's... All right, so logical disruptions, or destructions, that hap that's happening, certainly security points that out. But Ransom the security hacked. is the big thing, that's what the people didn't think about it back, definitely not like me, back, like 20 years ago, is like the, uh, so what happens if your system got hacked or like people, you know, you know like a ransomware, right? So it's, it's specifically the product designed to like, you know, <laughs> knock with your storage, uh, yeah. you know, like encrypted, deleted, whatever they want to do there. Uh, and uh, again, next thing you know, you like picking up junk that will hit by ransomware and then you go to your backups and it's like, oh my God. Where, where, where's everything? Because it's yeah. all it's all there. And so uh, you're saying people have a really strong backup and recovery, but they're recovering malware that they stored. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, so it's like <laughs> so th th that seems like an obvious problem, but um, like nobody but Aquanis has actually provides an integrated solutions to deal with that. I mean, there are different. I mean, people know what the problem is, and they there are companies out there like we'll scan your backup archives, we'll find you know malware your backup. Fine, great. But then. Um, um, anybody who tried to like really deal with the restore in a critical situation knows that even without the malware concerns, it's uh, it's stressful, shall we say? Yeah, and it's not always predictable. And it's and always it's post predictable. Post haste too, you're doing and, it after the fact. Right. right. Uh, but if the malware is involved, it's you know it becomes an extremely expensive and sometimes uh, you know impossible operation. Acronix take, takes care of that because you know we can actually monitor your backups. You know, we can find out where was the last time you were, you know, you were clean. It's an post hoc. You know, we obviously practice also do uh, kind of real time scanning for viruses. So it's a multi level cyber protection, which is fairly, you know, I think, it, I think it's unique in the industry. Well, I think it's interesting how you guys have brought data protection um, concepts and paradigm and practice, by the way, into cyber with much more holistic view. Right. And I think that's like an operating system kind of thinking. And thinking well, it and holistically is about systems. If and you, systems has consequences. If something goes wrong over here, it's affecting it over right, the place. Right. You have to write software for that. And you know, we have a very strong system background or DNA as they sometimes like to say that. And in fact, the first virtualizer, a virtualization solution, and containers for that matter, uh, were built by the Cronus engineering team uh, more than 15 years ago, way before it, like anybody in the Linux world knew how to spell container and what they hope of the name. Um, so that's and like our storage layer, software defined storage. It's yeah. fully blown HCI product, um, completely yeah. our own. Understand how we build that? That gives us a unique advantage among the security companies. You know, I got to ask you a question. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm fascinated. I'm a student of, of history and also a student of competitive advantage when it comes to technology platforms. And the one thing I always say and, and see with entrepreneurs, whether they're young or old, is that there's two types of entrepreneurs. There's a systems thinker and a coder, right? And I think with platforms, you can't shortcut a platform because there's um, trajectory benefits of economies of scale for putting the work in. You can't right. just put a platform out there overnight. You got to have a, you got to, got to build it, and it takes time. So well, there's some people trying to accelerate platforms. Some have done the work. You guys have done it for a long time. What's your view on that whole? Well, I'm going to throw a platform out there. What are some of the things that that like, get exposed when I try to, you know, push a platform too fast? Uh, well, <clears throat> the platform presumes that you have an ecosystem, people actually using it and building stuff on top of that. I mean, like, like every, you talked about the coders, right? So every programmer or software developer, or most of them at least, they dream of two things. They write in your, like, a create a new programming language, finally the one that can yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or the other kind of guys, like, oh, we're going to write a new operating system. I went through that phase, mostly in the operating system, a long time ago. And it's, you know, it's a process. I mean, whatever you build has to actually serve the purpose. Yep. If you, like, there are lots of platforms in all areas of technology, and then people's like, oh, we're going to create a set of APIs and anybody can plug in into us. It's like, unless you solve a real problem and really simplify life for people, uh, they're not going to do that. I mean, right, they're not going to do, like, use a platform for the sake of using the platform. Our cyber platform is different because we essentially expose uh, our 
APIs to our technology that's out there and people have been using. I mean, I don't know if you saw the keynote uh, yesterday, there was the demo of the way how do you write, let's call it plug-in for the sake of a better term, you know, for yep. the person of this interview. When people can add, uh, you know, their own policies to uh, cyber protect workflow, which could be specific to what they do, you know, like, yeah. you know, they notarize things like that. That plan, the platform makes sense because it's already out there and that's respond to customer demands. Like, you know, look, uh, we love what you guys do, but we have this specific set of requirements. And uh, if it's general enough, we incorporate it into the product, but there is also a lot of things which could be specific to a vertical or even to a specific company. Yeah. We just want to enable them to do this stuff. Well, that's what platforms are. They're enabling. Right. right. They have to enable some capabilities that provides value to that right. use case. And, and that could be custom, and and domain and specific. But, but I'm sorry. What, uh, that could be domain specific. So yes, a platform must I'm enable sorry. capabilities for right, someone right, to I, do something. Yeah, just, uh, just, just yes, but again, the key point to the platform is it has to kind of solve a real problem, not be there for the sake of yeah. elegance or solution or APIs and things of that nature. Final question for you, Alex. So I'm, I'm a CIO or CISO, or I'm out there with decision maker. I'm like, man, you know what? I got to get, a, I got to rethink um, my enterprise architecture. I got to think about, I got IOT coming. I got industrial IOT and just an and regular IOT. I want to have a comprehensive pl platform. Um, why Cronus? What's the pitch? And how do you, and what's different than the traditional SANS and storage and other solutions out there? What's the, what's that, what's that pitch to that enterprise decision maker well, on, um, on Cronus? You kind of like, uh, to say, as you say, I mean, you have a uh, tremendous growth in your, in, your, in your data flows. The number of data sources are exploding. It's actually going back to your previous question, I think that's what one of the differences is that it's not just a volume of data, it's the, like, the breadth of the data sources you're getting that. So you kind of have to manage that Getzo somehow, or it's not even a cat, I don't know. I don't know what the right analogy, like animal world analogy for that. Um, so you can like, how do you guys going to manage that? You have to protect it. At least you have to know what your exposure is, what the things there. And just throwing out a bunch of, you know, like, point standard products. network technologies, point yeah. products is not going to solve it. I mean, Yes, yeah. you can hire lots of people, you can build your own thing, you would be effectively reinventing lots of wheels in the process while we already have that solution for you. I like the platform idea because it makes data more addressable, horizontally scalable, it's not just a siloed, right. there's a slot product out there you can actually work and enable with data. Data's moving around, you got to be acted on. Yes. You need software to do that. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. So that's, that's another thing is, it's not, uh, it keeps like on you know, a structured data versus unstructured data. There's dis discussions been going on for many years. Uh, you know, the, the reality is you will always have both types and you will always have the need to process them in both ways. Um, and that's I have one more final question since I just popped in my head. It's like a final, final question. What's in the infrastructure platform that you're involved in that people should know about that they might not know about that's important to, to investigate? What, is there a killer well, feature? Is there a killer <laughs> thing in there that, that is like notable that they should know about? What's, the, what's under the hood on the infrastructure side for Cronus? Um, well, lots of things. You know? <laughs> what's your favorite <laughs> feature? Talking about that. What's your favorite feature? What's the one thing? Gosh, you know, it's like I have lots of babies, <laughs> I love them all. I mean, yeah, that's, you, that's really hard to You can't to take sides. Uh, it, it's not a sides. I mean, like we say, like, okay, I've been writing storage all my, most of my career, so I like storage, but, you know, that doesn't mean it's more important or less important than other things, you know, yeah. unless you have a, you know, comprehensive compute layer on top of that, the storage is just, then it become a storage vendor, niche vendor, right? Yeah. So that's not who we are. Um, I'm really fascinated by actually the integration with the like cyber feature and the security because that's on one hand it's not something that I've been doing uh, in my previous career for most of the time but I do have a lot of kind of uh, understanding of the workflow issues and integration points yeah. and that's yeah. Excites me. Something I, yeah. that's one of the reasons. Integrated I hear, I platforms is, I think, the key thing. Thanks for coming on, Alex. Thanks for sharing your insight. Appreciate it. First, okay. first thing in the morning here, and well, afternoon now. Thanks. You thanks never for know. On. I mean, that's like everybody's so busy. It's the Cronus inaugural so global cyber um, summit 2019 about cyber protection, not data protection. Cyber protection. They both work hand right. in hand. This is the Cube coverage here in Miami Beach. I'm John Furrier. We'll be back with more after this short break.
ました。